Yo! Video games. What up, dudes, and welcome back to the Yo Video Games Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Andrew. And once again, thank you to all our generous patrons who've kept this podcast going for over 450 episodes. Yeah, if you're interested in becoming a patron at any level, please check out patreon.com slash Yo Video Games Podcast. Due to the week is Jason C. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Uh, and it's it's uh it's one of those like it's an evergreen episode. So I'm I'm really happy about that. But also because we're we're gonna be away for a little bit, I bet you some big news is gonna happen. So if some yeah. big news happens, full, then... full disclosure, this one's being recorded pretty early ahead of time. And you know, if if this is if this is like say, okay, like when it goes up, like uh <laughs> if this goes up and and Nintendo has decided the day of this goes up that hey we're going to announce the Switch to this day. Sorry, yeah, okay. I had plans. I'm gonna I'm gonna be out of town. You're gonna be out of town. It's just it happened. Uh, but we have a really fun episode, and you you opened this up on on your Twitter account and got some yeah. amazing. Uh, Which, at the time of this recording, Twitter decided to poop itself. A bit this morning so oh well okay there's the another mass exodus to blue sky is is happening you know as as we record this um Not don't blame i don't blame anyone who does but uh yeah that that's if you want to know where we are that's where we are uh so the the topic of this episode though is uh games that looked great on paper but then just weren't uh, now, I don't know if we should. Is this extended to games that had like loads of hype around them and then were just a letdown? Or I specifically mean, games that looked good from concept? I think this kind of falls into two areas, which is the really interesting area and then the sort of the predictable one. The predictable one is like, hey, this game sounded great. And then it was just the game was just for, for very obvious reasons, usually like a rush terrible. job or, you know, bugs. Or whatever, it was just like, oh, it just didn't come out right. And then there's the this sounded like a really cool idea. And the game comes out, it's not a buggy mess. It's just that that's not as fun as you think in practice. Like the, the actual okay. the actual concept isn't good in practice, but I think that's pretty rare. So a lot of these are mostly gonna be disappointments. Well um, we'll we'll deal or we'll like differentiate if we come to one that that's the case. That's how I took it. Uh, games that I was that everything about it should be something I would love, and I just uh, yeah. And, and and the big thing here, this is not a sequel, disappointing sequel. This like okay. So my original post, and like I said, I'm going to honor everyone who who responded. Um, you know, name a game that sounded great on paper, but when you played it, it was not. No sequels or follow ups. I will give shout outs, you know, in the podcast to any good replies. And it's something like this. My my example is Aliens Colonial Marines. It is a franchise, but it's it was the idea was, hey, let's have a four player co-op survival horror shooter sequel to the Aliens movie. OK, OK. To a, it's a sequel to a movie. And it's, so it so kind of skirts the line a little bit there on franchise, but it's it's supposed to be a unique idea. It's not a part two of another video game or whatever. Right, so it's not the Division 2, which, right, you know, even if you liked Division 1, Division 2, for some reason, turned a lot of people, they just got bored of the concept, whatever it was. It died, so, it died very quick. By the way, I have at least 90 replies, and if you quote tweeted it, I'm sorry, you probably, I'm probably have no idea. Um, that's your fault. <laughs> I, but, I, okay, with, I had, I wrote down some of my favorites that we talked about uh that you got replies but i didn't get every person's name ah, um, some of these are really good okay i'm just gonna i'm just going down it and and you know we can't spend all episode talking about one game or whatever here so robocop right. dude puts forth brutal legend read about it at the <laughs> time played the demo that was gonna be a fun actually now brutal legend's an excellent opener <laughs> everyone thought okay it's a it's a hard rock action game it's going to be this this sort of Either, either maybe Dynasty Warriors or maybe Devil May Cry, but it's going to be this crazy action game set in the world of a metal album cover starring Jack Black as the main character. And what you got was Pikmin. <laughs> okay, but here's the thing. 
it was it was also sort of jank, but when we played it, well, I don't know if you were there, but we we played it at our friend's game store and we just stood around just tearing on it. Like, I mean, just and it was a great day. So it's not fair. Like, it isn't good. <laughs> it wasn't good. But I had a great time. Every, everything about it sounded like this should be awesome. You know, the Psychonauts devs are making a, a crazy action game that's like a metal album cover with Jack Black as the lead, and then it's going to be, and it's Pikmin. And what what are you doing, Tim? Tim, what are you doing? It it really was one of those things where it's like you. It was nothing that you expected it to be, and nothing you wanted it to be either. Yeah, and it was nothing you wanted from it a, a, a perfect example of the opposite is i thought this this game overlord was going to be crap and it's also kind of a pikmin yeah but overlord's kind of fun actually overlord they made like three of, of them too yeah yeah i think well i only played the first two but the first one is just like dumb fun loved overlord one um but overlord didn't try to trick you into thinking it was going to be something it wasn't no so. yeah no i just but i also expected it to suck like I, I just thought at the time, like ah, it's a Pikmin knockoff, and I don't even really care about Pikmin. And then I, I played it on a whim. Great, it's a great time. <laughs> Loved it. Yeah. Al Zero put forth, and this actually got feedback. Mag, which I don't know if you even remember. This is a PlayStation Three game. Mag from Zipper Interactive, massive action game. Um, yeah, it definitely was ahead of its time. The idea was it was going to be, uh, a, 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 I think it was sixty four or or a hundred person uh in, in an arena it's it, it you really okay. don't remember this game no you don't remember their their big push for we're gonna have this massive action game there's gonna be like 100 or 64 people in every match you know and i'm like it's it predates the br buzz and it's like yep this yeah. was too early uh and and basically it became like you would load you would log on you would load into a match you'd run for 10 minutes and you get shot in the back of the head and then you'd wait to respawn well, I in that same vein, and yes, it's a sequel, but like I when we take a dump on Battlefront 2, a lot of the reasons that like Battlefront 2 should have been awesome on paper are also reasons that it is not fun. And it's like, what's the most fun thing that you remember about Battlefront 2? I don't know. I didn't play Battlefront 2. Oh, How well, the Star hero, Star the hero system. Yeah, the Star Wars Battlefront Star Wars? 2. The I only played system. one. I was not playing two after that. Oh, I guess maybe I'm thinking of Battlefront One. It's the well, I bought the one. And I did not play two. Two was the two was the pay to boba. Oh, right. Okay, so I'm thinking of one. It's the same reason why one was like the most fun part of one is the reason why one just ended up like nose diving on fun because just like a jobber in Star Wars, fighting a Jedi sucks. Like, right, but being a Jedi, awesome. It's just that only a certain number of people that, that, that. that played out exactly as it would on paper, but whatever. Um, on paper, it seemed cool to be able to be. But I would also disqualify it because it's a it's Star Wars Battlefront, a reboot of Battlefront. So I realize it is disqualified. It's just it was a it was a thought that I was having is like there's a lot of reasons to hate on Battlefront. But one of the reasons that I don't get to see very often or I don't see brought up very often is that the concept itself is sort of cool. But then it plays out exactly like you expect it to play out. And it's just not it it burns you out so fast. Yeah, you have you have superheroes running around. Right. And it's just ugh. Ugh. I but when you're playing as the superhero, kind of ah ah. I, I guess. It's a lot of oofs and I guess I don't have fond memories of that game. No, really. I, not a lot. I don't mostly just like mostly just like are you effing kidding me? I spent sixty dollars on this and everyone's done after a week. Well, I was tricked. <laughs> I was tricked into getting it. Everyone, it was uh, Welsenbach. If you're listening, you yeah. mother uh, Welsenbach and DJ both spent I don't know two weeks convincing me that this is the this is the thing we're all gonna play, man. It's gonna be the greatest thing. To the point where I think I went with one of them to the midnight. Mm -hmm. thing to get it and i got a poster of it and everything and we played for maybe three days and everyone got burnt out so great on paper terrible terrible in practice or great out of matt's mouth <laughs> but <laughs> fair it doesn't count uh i want to interject with ones 
from us though before we go down 90 people list uh i put days gone on there uh, like that's kind of a bit of a controversial choice because I, I think it is yeah it's an underdog game people kind of like i mean the director's apparently a real real salty salty bastard about <laughs> about it but well uh, I, i'm talking personal opinion i'm not saying it's a bad game i'm saying everything about it i should love i have tried to play the game five times yeah five times and every time i get I think the longest I've gotten in is like six or seven hours and then I just lose interest. And then a year later or six months later or however I try again, but I don't remember anything. So I got to restart. And I just, I did, maybe I'm just not making it to the point where everyone gets hooked. I don't know what it is. Everything about it. I should love zombie apocalypse. Well, people, well, that was what people hated about it when it was announced. Everyone else like, Oh, another one of these games. Like it, it was, the the response to to seeing its announcement was mostly sort of uh, another one well the the first announcement wasn't very i don't know enticing it wasn't good it looked like a like a last of us knockoff in the first annou announcement mm -hmm. it's not it isn't again i'm not trying to say it's a bad game i'm saying it's just i try as i might it just it it never followed through for me, and maybe other people feel that way. But I know there's like a lot of diehard fans for it, so I wanted to yeah. I wanted to start spicy. But if you want to if you want to go down the list, there's some really great. <laughs> some really. Well, I mean, I'm the, we want to keep the biker motif. Bio Mega Bear. I don't know why, but he he thought Ride to Hell Retribution uh, sounded great on paper. He's like the idea of being a biker in an open world game is cool if you look at what they wanted. But man. When they closed the studio, helping the main studio just fell apart. The guy on the cover isn't even the same guy who played in the game. So, I mean, this is kind of like an infamously bad video game. But I guess, I guess the idea is is not like okay, play like a game where you, an open world game where you play in a biker gang. It's not necessarily a bad idea. Uh, it's just yeah, I don't like the game as a PO. Now there was a couple of people, uh, Zookie Wookie uh, included, who put up Marvel Avengers. I will kick back on this and say, I don't know. To me, the idea was hmm. always, I never liked the idea of this game. But I guess I'm just not the audience because like, hey, we're going to have an, an online multiplayer game set in the Avengers universe. And I'm like, why? I don't want to do that. Like that's To me, I was I was against the idea from the get-go. Just like a live service Avengers game. Like, don't you want don't you want like an Arkham Asylum game with the Avengers? Don't you want just don't you want a Spider-Man game like a really crafted, curated, well done? No, people people were on. I guess there was some a lot of people who were really on board with the idea. Like I want to play an online, always multiplayer Avengers game. I yeah, I I, I feel me, like I'm just not. I don't like, I, I don't like the idea of this game on paper, but I think I think I'm just not. Again, I think there isn't. There was definitely people who were excited for that. Well, yes. I mean, there absolutely were people that were excited. Look, there's like a lot of comic book stuff that people are hyped for that I don't, you know. So I'm I'm the worst. Like if I if I went and saw a comic book movie that I was all like, it's total crap. You shouldn't take my word for it. You should just because I don't like I I have no connection to the comic books behind. Like I went and saw Deadpool and Wolverine, and I thought it was fun, but I was like, there's. You gotta care about yeah. so many comic books. For I mean, all, all that being said, all that being said, it should have still been a better game than it was. Well, yeah, but that like, like the idea on paper shouldn't have been should have been sound enough, but the the way they grind, the way they you had to grind, and then the way they made it harder to grind, like in updates, uh, the the really lackluster combat system just. There were just all these other little things that are like, man. And then the big one for most people was just the fact that everyone looked like a stunt double. So, well, you want to play as Chris Evans? Great value of Ongers, you know. Sweet, sweet to, of me, to me, that's not really it's that that's really here or there. I don't think the fact that you don't look like the actors from the MCU should be that condemning to the game. It's just the fact that I'm like, you win for a hyper realistic. Are, you know graphic style and then you don't use the actors from the live action movies you should have gone the ultimate alliance 3 route make it look really comic booky just right. embrace it's to embrace its comic roots rather than 
I don't know, like, because that's the thing. You go for hyper realism, and then you have people who are look nothing like the actors played in the movies. You you did it. You kind of did it to yourself there, because it's not cheap to 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 model, you know, real life models and actors and face scans and do all this stuff for people who are not playing them in the movies. So it's kind of like you're spending a ton of money anyways. I think their idea was that like people, there would be more people interested in a realistic looking Avengers game, even if it wasn't the actors or the movie, than there would be people if they saw it as a cell shaded wow. game or a comic book style game, they would think it's some cheap product and they wouldn't buy it. So they are incorrect, but also uh, I don't think they wanted to, play into how much they needed those stars for people to care about their movies. The whole, all of Marvel was set up so that no one movie star was important enough to carry the franchise. Yeah. Like that was, that was the whole design about it. They were, they were trying to kill the movie star in a way, uh, which is hilarious because what did they have to do to rely on to get the next cycle going? They had to go back to a movie star and pay him an ungodly amount of money. And I don't think it's going to save it. Unfortunately, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, Avengers is a good one. And similarly, also pointed out by Dominic Drive, Suicide Squad, recent one this year. Exact same problem as Avengers. It just was Avengers and fast motion. But that one didn't look good on paper. Again, I'd argue, I don't think, again, I, a Suicide Squad game, okay. A multiplayer yeah. only Suicide Squad game. What are you doing? Well, yeah, and then when they actually showed it, the combat, there was nothing, you know, when you, you know, when you, like, there was no one character in the showcase that looked like they were going to be particularly unique or fun to play as. Yeah. Everyone's just jetpacking around shooting machine guns. Right, because they all have to be able to keep up with each other. Yeah. You know, like, it, you can't you can't have a person that is particularly slow or limited in the range that they can really attack in like, or otherwise nobody would play that character. It wouldn't be fun. You know, it's just, it's on paper. Well, okay. I'll, I'll give them this. The idea of playing as the suicide squad and taking on the justice league kind of cool. Cause it's, it's a suicide mission. Do it. Everything else on paper about that game said that it wasn't going to be particularly interesting. Yeah. And then they showed it. It's it is unfortunate because I, you know, I'm sure the devs cared very deeply about getting out something really really good. It just seemed like a game made by a marketing committee. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, the the W Venus yeah. seems to the, the tentacles of that of that hydra seem to be like all over it. You know, make it this, make it this, make it this. Right. So, well, I, I will well, what do the numbers say? Hmm. That's always what worked. I'm saying now. Uh, long time dude, the Arnett, he had his four horsemen of the disappointment, which was mighty number nine, which I would normally disqualify. Uh, Skull Island, Rise of Kong. I can't believe someone was, you were, you were anticipating that, all right? Brutal legend. Uh, and then the other one, which gets repeated a lot, is Anthem. Anthem is a probably perfect yes. game of this should have been awesome. Yes. On paper, this sounds like the coolest thing. In practice, we got Anthem. <laughs> Does anybody... I, I just want to know, you know, go ahead and comment in the YouTube channel, whatever. Like, do you remember, without looking it up, what Anthem was promised to be? Okay? Let's just take a second. Just... If you remember that, comment what it, what you thought it was. Because it was nothing like the right, very first... This anthem was basically supposed to be like Mass Effect meets Avatar meets Mech Warrior. Yeah. Like we, yeah. we were expecting something with like Mass Effect pedigree of, of RPG with like Avatar level world. of graphics and, yeah. and world design. And then something with, you know, Mech Warrior level of, you know, mechs and customizations that are yours. And you get to like really personalize and everything. And then you get the game and it's a big, it's a big piece of junk. It, it, it was the biggest over promised game. It's one of those, uh, God, there's another game that I'm thinking of and I'm, I'm blanking on the name, but like where they just like promised every, Oh, no man's sky. Yeah. <laughs> also on this list, probably somewhere they promised yeah, yeah. everything. And then what they released did not live up to it at all. Uh, which I didn't know at the time. I was very happy with it before I found out that, uh, they didn't deliver on anything that they promised. 
But now No Man's Sky is great, but No Man's Sky is perfect for this if you talk just purely launch, right? If you if you just go from like what it was when it came out, nothing like what it was supposed to be on paper. Now, granted, right? Well, again, I, and I always go back to I think was it Sean because I'm like Sean, bro, you 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 lied on national TV, you know, you lied right on the Tonight Show or or whichever late night show you went on, you know, saying what you could do in the game, which you literally could not do one day before the game came out. So yeah, I mean, just it just in general, like Anthem is is. It was kind of like the second nail. I don't know. Well, like we can't say it's a coffin yet for for uh, Bioware. But it's so close, though. It, it was the it was the one two. It was the two. It was the second punch and the one two punch of Andromeda and Anthem. I think Anthem. Oh. Actually, I don't even remember. I, I thought Andromeda came out before Anthem. I think that's how it went. I um, like, I think so because wasn't Andromeda what basically killed the Mass Effect franchise, and then well, everyone Andromeda. expected this to. Yeah, I don't know. Andromeda was was really badly received. I, I mean, it was just. But that was one on paper that was that I was excited for, uh, yeah. all the way up until it came out. The Yemmer had an interesting one because it's also kind of recent, but you don't hear anyone talk about it. It's called Immortals, uh, Immortals of Avium. Uh, oh, I, mean, just, I love Magitek. Whenever I see it, I was super into the idea of playing a first person shooter as a mage wizard. But once I actually started to play it, it felt like every other first person shooter I've ever played. Nothing about using magic felt magical. Ooh. So and that one's kind of rough because that's that's the one where like the studio, the, the, the studio people kind of like were getting there were some shenanigans over their payroll after the game came out. It's basically like dead because oh, it, it was it was the idea where they're like, OK, the new studios formed and they're trying to make their first IP and they're trying to go like this big triple A thing through EA for their first game. And it was like, you probably shouldn't have shot for the so high for the moon or right off the bat, you know? Oh, man. Uh, well, I mean, in the same vein of uh, of magic and stuff, which I know there's other controversy around it, but Hogwarts Legacy was one that on paper it should have been amazing. And then everyone I know that played it was all like, well, except one person. I know one person who beat it two times, loved every second of it. Everyone else that I know that was really amped for it was just kind really? of like, about halfway through. They were just kind of like, it's the same thing over and over and over again. I never oh, played it myself, like, so I like can't school? say yeah, kind of like school. <laughs> it's kind of you know, like I mean, that is that is combat. legitimately an amazing selling game. One of the best selling games, the best selling game in America last year. Like people like it, I think I can't. But give, that's interesting. Well, the thing is, is like I can't give it my own personal. I didn't play it, yeah. um, but I know two people who are huge Harry Potter fans got it got like halfway through petered out didn't care anymore one person who's never even read harry potter ever but like saw one of the movies and he's played it and beat it twice and loves the damn game like beat it but also he loves the ufc games so you know can you really trust his opinion <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my stuff sorry uh if he's listening fuck you <laughs> um yeah i'm gonna have to yeah i'm gonna start cut I, i'm gonna have to call some of these that just kind of break it i like nero nova pointed out too human uh by by silicon knights this was this was their okay. big follow-up after eternal darkness and twin snakes i yeah and it was supposed to be a big giant big budget action rpg yeah. Nordic mythology but in space but with space tech and stuff and Man, the game came out and it was not good. Not good at all. The 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 weird idea to use a twin stick combat system. Yeah, that and, was the... the really really funky looking animations. Uh boy, this this it's funny because you know they left Nintendo to go find their their big HD greener pastures with Microsoft and hey, Microsoft, you know, gave them gave them a shot, gave them a good honest shot. You know, big E3 presence, a lot of publicity. Game came out, and I'm like, Ugh, this game is, yeesh. Okay, I don't remember it being terrible, but I do remember uh, losing interest in it pretty quickly. I remember it being extremely uneventful. Yeah, well, it's it's not a very exciting action. Well, 
I don't know. The, the thing is, is part of the problem is, is I don't remember most of the game. Like I remember a couple of set pieces, but I don't remember like hating the game. Yeah. But I guess that in of itself is kind of a indictment. I think as Nero Nova point, we you know his statement is like, I remember my friend and I being so excited about this game. And when it finally came out, this feeling of emptiness, not even disappointment. We just felt nothing. Well, this is, this is kind of how I felt about dishonored too. Yeah. I think it's dishonored too. Yeah. Where I really liked the first one. And I, I know we're not talking about sequels and stuff, but like when I played the second one, I was just like, Oh, okay, no. And a lot of people love that game, but there was just too many things to turn me off about it. Um, I'm trying to think like what's what's like obvious ones. I feel like the obvious ones were Anthem and No Man's Sky, but uh, yeah. who's the person who said Callisto Protocol? Uh, there are multiple people who said Callisto Protocol. A lot of people saying Callisto Protocol. So me, so true. Let me see if I can uh, call it, let's see where can I find one that definitely said Callisto Protocol. Um. <laughs> Uh, Genjioni, uh, Genji, oh, yeah. yeah, Genjioni was one who said Callisto Protocol, and then there were there were other ones. I think it was one of the first replies I even got. You know, uh, Animu Stew Shine, <laughs> hell yeah, also said Callisto Protocol. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's kind of it, it skirts the line because it really is supposed to be a Dead Space follow. -up. It is kind of a follow -up to Dead Space. It is. It is. It's the same director, Glenn Schof uh, Schofield, and you know, it's it's sort of a follow up. But yeah, but they're like, hey, it's going to have a new style of combat. It's going to be like a new. Originally, it was supposed to be set in the PUBG universe, and then it's not. But yeah, that was a weird turn when they said yeah. that. Yeah. Um, the thing that I will say about it, I mean, it looks good when it runs good. When. Uh, it's supposed to be a lot of the complaints are fixed now, which, you know, mm -hmm. doesn't make a difference now, but you know, because yeah, the studio is pretty much gone, I think. And yeah, uh, really the biggest problem, like the, the ambiance was pretty cool. Combat was hard because it was jank. Like yeah. that was the, it was, an I mean, that's the, I think combat. ultimately, yeah, that's the thing that kills it. It's like the moment to moment gameplay of engaging with an enemy sucks. Yeah, well, and it doesn't suck in the way of like you're scared you're gonna lose because it's hard. You're scared you're gonna lose because of some bullshit. <laughs> like it feels like the world's wonkiest punch out. I don't know. <laughs> the most violent punch. Well, this is how. Okay, do you remember Manhunt? Yeah. So. Manhunt was not a disappointment. It was it was fun. But I do always I have always felt like it didn't live up to the promise of it. And Manhunt hid behind being like hyper mature. Like you're saying hyper it wasn't gory enough or hyper violent. We saying it wasn't enough because I think it was two got or got a rated AO originally. And then they had to like scale back a lot to like get two down to an M rating. Well, it was just like it, it. Do you remember? Like it was it, just more was promised than what we got. Like it ended up being like mostly like hallways and uh, right, you know that kind of thing. Like it was just like it, it wasn't. It just didn't live up to the promise of you know. You, you basically were just wandering around hallway. Like that's what happened with Callisto Protocol. Is like it, so much about it had promise, and then the combat was just such a speed bump. Manhunt had so much promise and the environments were kind of a speed bump. Yeah, well, I don't I don't know what I don't know what you would I guess Manhunt's one of those games like I would not have ever expected anything from a game like that to begin with. Like what what were you expecting to do? Like where were well, you expecting one, this game to play to be? It was never it was never promised to be open world. So that's more on my kid brain of like expecting it to be. Yeah, it's just like state of emergency. Yeah, well, state of emergency is just that was another. Uh, I don't know. Were there people that actually liked state of emergency? No, there there was like what five five people who liked state of emergency. <laughs> um, Got a sequel. Rockstar didn't publish it though. No, I mean that's you know maybe that's what it was on is like Rockstar. 
I expected Rockstar to deliver an open world, you know, I don't, I don't know. It, it's, it's so long ago that I played it. Maybe I'm misremembering things that I disliked. Well, oh, it's it. a very ugly, boring, you know, uh, uh, claustrophobic game. It is. I just, it's just kind of one of those things. Like, I, yeah, I'm sure the level design could have been a lot better than it was, but it's like, I, I don't know. I was never anticipating Manhunt or anything personally. But I can see I, it definitely falls into that Rockstar set this precedent and then games, a, a lot of other games on PS2, people expected to be like Grand Theft Auto and they weren't. Right. Yeah. And maybe that's what, it, you know, it's not like Rockstar promised the moon. Maybe I just expected them. And sometimes it worked out. Bully worked out for a lot of people. <laughs> for a lot of people, it sounds like it didn't work out for you. I didn't play it because it was a school setting. I didn't care. <laughs> you don't care about the school setting? No, I don't. You didn't want. You, you didn't want to see. <laughs> you know this. <laughs> you didn't want to find out what it was like to get bullied in school. <laughs> no, I don't care. Fair enough. Uh, I'm trying to think of other like spicy takes. You got a spicy take? Oh yeah, Kingdom Hearts. Straight up. Okay. Kingdom Hearts to me is the ultimate game that sounds great on paper, but in practice is not. And a lot of reasons for this, which is namely, well, some of it is like, okay, well, where the series went shortly after the second game, or even really, even the second game, Chain of Memories, you could even argue, started to, to devolve right there. Um, so the game is, is it's an RPG, it's an action RPG where you travel to Disney, different Disney worlds and you fight a you fight an enemy that's in all of them called the Heartless. That's basically trying to take over each world or mm -hmm. whatever absorb every world. I don't care. Um, so you're like, okay, that's that's not bad. That, that's something. Uh, but then it just it, it, it boils down to the most you know weirdest and like even if you follow because there you know you hear it from people who it's really not that hard to follow if you just if you just pay attention you just follow you know regardless if it is or isn't hard to follow. I sit there and say, why does this story need to be this way? Why does it? Ha why are we doing this? Why do we have literally somewhere in the neighborhood of of twenty five plus non non related to any Disney film characters, like unique characters, twenty five to fifty even? I have all these uniquely created characters. And their storylines do not involve any particular Disney world whatsoever. They are their own. They have their own unique storyline. They come from their own unique worlds. They have their own unique premise and whatever. They have very, very t like loose, tiny connections to, to any actual Disney anything. Why do we have this, this crazy, weird, uh, like fever dream? of a background story that takes center stage very quickly within the franchise. When the whole idea of the game was built around the idea that you go to different Disney worlds, you interact and meet different Disney characters and sometimes final fantasy characters. Then they got rid of the final fantasy characters entirely. And then you, you basically play these, these very footnote versions. And then even within the first game, it kind of falls apart because you, again, you're playing footnote versions of these Disney movies. You're not actually going through, you don't learn anything new. You, the lore in an RPG, the dialogue and lore and characterization of the Disney characters is not expanded at whatsoever. You basically watch some cutscenes, you follow along with some plot lines and then you fight a boss battle and then you move on. So is that a Disney thing or a square thing? Well, the, the, the Disney thing in, and I think this was a last thing at the time. And, and this guy likes to touch people inappropriately. So we should not care what he thought. Um, any any longer, you know, going okay. forward, which is he said no crossovers. Like you couldn't go and and meet Aladdin, and then Aladdin could join your party, and then you could take Aladdin to Alice in Wonderland or Tarzan or where or you know whatever, right? So there was no crossover. That was like a big rule: no crossover. The only people who cross, the only characters that can cross over, you know, are Mickey, Donald, and Goofy. And I think that was stupid. I think that was a dumb idea. I think that was a dumb idea from the start. Um, I, th Why I think, would... I think you absolutely should be able to take the characters with you. Now I know this gets a little weird where say you go to a world like toy story and you shrink down to the size of a toy. It's like, I'm going to take buzz with me, buzz and Woody to, to Aladdin's world, but buzz and Woody are, are literally toys. Like, are they, are they going to be like this, you know, little tiny figurines when you go to like another world where you're full size. So I get that. I get that a little bit. Um, 
you know how you work around that is if you actually had a turn-based battle system and it wouldn't really matter. But, uh, but you know, you could still, you could still theoretically make it work in some way. But anyways, I, getting back to the original point, I think what these, what Kingdom Hearts should have been is that when you go to a Disney world, you, you go and you talk to any, any archivist or any, if it's a, if it's a modern film, go talk to the people who wrote it and made it and say, what are things you wanted to put in the movie that you couldn't put in the film? What are character backstories? What are little tidbits or things that you wanted to add into the Disney film that we couldn't add into it because of time constraints, budget constraints, whatever, like just give me the lore and the details of things that were cut from the movie and let's put it in to this game because the game, we don't have to, we don't have to sit here and adhere to a 90 minute runtime and do all this crazy animation, but they didn't do that. You know, when you go to Agrabah, it's a completely empty town. It's just a bunch yeah. of, it's just a bunch of repeated, you know, uh, 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 you know, fruit stands or whatever, just like, you know, mar market stands. And then you just fight generic little heartless that just generate into the map. Like in Final so, Fantasy 16. Yeah, basically. So, like, why didn't, why didn't, why isn't Agrabah, like, a fully featured town? Like, why isn't Agrabah the town? Like, you go to the Cave of Wonders, but you basically just go there just to fight Jafar kind of thing. Like, right. it, it feels a, a completely unlived up to its potential, but it's got a keyblade and it's got good music and, and you know, it's, I don't know. To me, I'm very much like, okay, well, what is, what is Kingdom of Hearts? What is the point of it? to go to other Disney movies and worlds and, and meet with those characters and, and interact with those characters and, and go along and sort but you don't get any story additions. Again, you get a footnote version because we have and where all the story is, is, is hyper fixated into this thing that exists outside the Disney worlds into their own unique worlds with their own unique characters fighting their own unique fight. Probably and, because Disney wouldn't let them write stories involving their characters. Well, and apparently there wasn't much oversight, as it sounds like from the early games, because when they made three, Nomura expressed frustration because he said Pixar had absolute authority over the Pixar worlds that they got to do in three, because it took them a long time to get to be able to approve the Pixar worlds. And, and then he said, I, I, I must have had 10 or 20 times. I must have had my entire script sent back with notes from Pixar saying no, no like rejecting <laughs> what what he wrote you know because originally they wanted to do like you know toy story one or three or whatever and they're like no we don't want you to do we do not want you to do a a shortened version of one of the films or like the toy story world must take place between movies like one and two or two and three um and mm -hmm. you know it, it like they we they had ultimate say over what, everything that everything the character said and did and it was a pain and it was a pain in the ass, according to, to Nomura. And I'm like, well, it, it probably should be because you're not hand like, frankly, Nomura and Nojima, they're not handling these Disney properties that well. Like, yes, it looks like the movies. But from a writing standpoint, this is garbage. <laughs> so, I, you know, if you wanted to come at me with like, you know, my my beloved award winning film, I'm like, no, I'm going to I'm going to put a little bit more. I'm going to put a little bit more, you know, standing away. I'm going to put a little authority on this. I'm going to put a little thought into it and thought into it. I'm sorry. No, it's just. Mm -mm. Well, see, the thing is, is I, I don't think uh, the Kingdom Hearts. I don't think it's that spicy. I, don't, I, I think people expected it. I think uh, I think that didn't. That didn't freak anybody out. So I'm going to give a little bit spicier, slightly spicier. I'm going to say Alien Isolation, also a beloved game. Beloved game that isn't bad. It's just that uh, about two or three levels in, I got it. I got it. I figured it out. I didn't hate it. But I was, on paper, it never it never evolved. Could have gotten, could have kept getting better. You're saying it didn't get scarier after a certain point? It's not even that it didn't get scarier. It's just the whole thing was the same thing as like uh, you're in a new area and now it resets the alien and you just have to avoid the alien. Okay, there's no combat or anything like that. There's nothing, yeah. you know, you just avoid a, It's the same. Re, a, alien Isolation was the it proved that the guys who made uh, what was that Dick Bros game? Outlast. Yeah why outlast was short 
Because if you're going to have a game that has no combat, where the whole point is to just avoid something that can definitely kill you, you got to get in, you got to get out. And Alien Isolation went on too long. Mm. With the same, you just got to avoid it or you're going to die. Again, not bad. Was cool first two hours. I think you're saying the concept doesn't doesn't merit its length. Like the concept doesn't doesn't last long enough. On paper, looks great. When you actually play it, though, it gets it gets rote. It gets mm-hmm. uh, and fast. And the thing is, is again, <clears throat> I know not... people really love it. Not and one of the weirdest things I heard. One of the things I heard is that the game is is not good in the last third because it devolves into well, there and then you eventually get a hive. And there are multiple aliens eventually. And you you can scare them away, but you can't kill them. Right. And, and I, I thought that was an interesting take where it's like, hey, like, I loved the game in the... Because a lot of people say like it's it's too slow of an opening. And some people, I've heard also the opposite where not even that the opening is slow. And the opening is slow, but also the fact that it devolved back down into a hive and multiple aliens and facehuggers... Uh, made it lose made it lose its appeal or something i don't know like just like it was it was too expected became too predictable i mean i i guess uh, i would call it repetitive rather than predictable like if you if you're now down there and you've got yeah you get a flamethrower and it's like but all you can do is scare them away you can't actually kill them and it's like just what does it matter if they're if they're if there are like an unlimited number of aliens and face huggers down there, let me kill them anyway. It's it's the same effect. It's just that I get the the satisfaction of killing one bug of many. Uh, it's, but it's, instead, all you do is scare you. You hit it, it screams, it runs away for a second, and then it's hunting you again. And if you're not looking when it finds you, you're dead. It's uh, funny how in the end, like the most kind of like low key, low budget alien game. Kind of the one that kind of like really hit. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it it, it delivered with Fire Team Elite. It was just yeah. just doing the thing it was supposed to do. Yeah, delivered exactly what. It, now, granted, uh, its lasting power wasn't necessarily. You know, yeah, but it was a short game, and it wasn't trying to kill you, you right? Know, beat you over the head with length. Exactly, and Alien Isolation, if it was half as long, probably would have been twice as good. Um, mm. Mm. the thing is is again i want to because i know people really love it i do not actually hate this game i'm just saying that the concept of it made me like ooh. and then when i was done with it i was kind of like man <laughs> <laughs> yeah but not bad like you should play it if you haven't played it it's cool if you haven't played it and you like alien get in it it is not a letdown like colonial marines was colonial it just it just wears out its welcome a little too too right it's not terrible right it just doesn't live up to the concept in my opinion gotcha i like this one from silent k gaming Uh, it's it's a little rule breaking but i just need to read it resident evil outbreak i was so hyped for this concept got it on release date and then it sucked yeah yeah, yeah. actually i've seen i've seen them i've seen many in the resident evil community try to argue that this game is good they're lying to themselves because they feel obligated to like everything Resident Evil. Now, Mike Mike tries to argue that it's not that bad. Like he he's never said that it's outright good. Although he he I think it's one of his favorite is Outbreak, but he's never argued that it's good. He's just like it's not as bad as people say. It is as bad as people say. Now, if they made an Outbreak today, right with today's well, here's internet the thing. infrastructure my, yeah. my my experience with outbreak is during covid and we were playing on parsec via emulation and using discord so we were all able to talk at all times and communicate yeah. i think the game the way it was presented as it was when it came out it's not good it isn't no and and file 2 is is actually pretty decent but I don't, I don't, I would don't think I would give Outbreak anything more than a six and maybe a seven for the second one. That's pretty generous, though. That's actually like seven is it's average because like it doesn't look terrible. It it, it controls like you expect it to. It does. It kind of does what you expect it to. I it just if anything, I would say this falls into the, the, the category of like, I don't think this concept is as good as you think it is. 
because if you want to play a traditional Resident Evil game with item management, with puzzle solving, you know, with with conserving ammo and stuff like that, that is hard to do with other people. It is very hard to do with other people because eventually someone's going to dick around, goof off, screw up, or just, you know, just make one too many accidents and it's going to get you killed for through no, no fault of your own. It's just not as, it's not as fun as you think it should be. If it's especially if you, you want to go, if you want to go camera angles, static camera angles, no, fuck. you know, and, and, and traditional style Resident Evil controls, this is not going to be fun multiplayer. It just isn't. People who like static camera angles and tank controls are just people. They're just masochists. They don't want to admit that they're masochists, but they're masochists. And that's okay. Be into whatever kink you want to be into. But I don't got to be into it. <laughs> it's just not good. Um, no, I. if you had Remake 2, like that style, but in... But the outbreak idea where you're you're all trying sure. to solve puzzles in the area to move on to the next area, you know, that like then I think it works, especially if you only have communication based on distance until you can, like, get a walkie talkie or something like that. Lethal company. Kind of. Yeah, actually. Yeah, kind of. But in Resident Evil, yeah. uh, I think that would be great. But no, I'm I'm totally on board. Outbreak. <laughs> I nope. just think the the way the way they present. Nah, I don't know. Uh, there's a good one from Fox Eye Valkyrie. Uh, you've never heard of it, Andrew. It's it's a game called Left Alive, with art by Yoji Shinkawa of Metal Gear Solid fame. So it's in the Front Mission universe, but you're playing as a soldier on foot, and you're basically trying to like es basically escape like a like a city basically that's been quarantined or basically said hey the city's doomed get out kind of thing it's been left alone or whatever so you're like a survivor in like a bombed city or something so it's supposed to be like a stealth thing and now here's the thing it's not the first time front mission dabbled in in having on foot stuff and front mission has always been a highly political uh political thriller series hmm. so the idea that you would be basically playing a soldier left alive in a city that was basically abandoned or whatever, and you have to get out, like say, like it's now it's behind enemy lines or something. This actually sounds like metal, you know, Metal Gear with lots of mechs should be great. And the game was a pile of junk, like Ooh. just absolute dog water, dog balls. Like that's too bad. Really is too bad. I, um, another good one, J Legends at Advent Rising, which I remember the hype around that game. I remember the million dollar giveaway <laughs> they had to cancel. <laughs> Advent Rising, yeah. Because the, the million dollar giveaway was based on the fact they thought the game was going to be successful. <laughs> so they thought way more people would buy it. So they would have a million dollars to give someone. Oops. Uh, <laughs> Advent Rising is an interesting one. Um, I'm trying to think of like, do you remember the like really? Well, no, actually, that totally lived up to its concept. I was going to say Zone of Enders. Two especially did. One was more of a tech demo. Yeah, well, one was a tech demo, which was I was kind of going to say like, hey, it was too short to be to live up to what it was. Prom but it was a tech demo, so it's not really. I just remember playing it a lot when we first got the PS2 as kids because mm. we couldn't afford a game yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got we got that. Um, I forget what else we it, it was like that and something else. But um, yeah, not fair to say Zone of the Enders. Um, uh, I like Mike, Mike Barry M. He had a double, double header, Sudeki and two worlds. Gosh, I remember hanging out at Sudeki at E3 at the booth with the Microsoft booth with Sudeki in it with Climax developers for a while thinking, oh yeah, this game looks great. You know, it's kind of be kind of like fable with an art style. Um, <laughs> how and, dare and, you? And then I, it came out and it really just wasn't very good at all. Like it, it very much came out as the. Uh, how to draw manga and anime version of a JRPG. Uh, and then Two Worlds is interesting because I doubt you know anything about this. So Two Worlds was, it's an RPG started by two former engineers uh, who wanted to make a hyper, very, very hyper-realistic um, RPG game where that was that was very, very much into the stat-heavy shit that they loved. So here's the problem. Uh, it, it's It's a European Western RPG from a studio founded by two engineers. So you can imagine that art was, based, 
art was basically considered a, a crime to have art artwork in the game or an art style. So I remember the, seeing the game from the beginning and thinking this looks boring as hell. Wait, what year it, did this come out? This was like 360 era, so mid 360 era. So a lot of people were actually kind of really looking forward to Two Worlds as a sort of oblivion follow up. I watched Justin play some of this. Yeah, okay. like it was, yeah. it's supposed to be a very technical game. Yeah. And apparently it came out exactly as I thought it would. Boring as hell. And I remember when Two Worlds 2 came out, I'm like, oh, boy, this is a mouthful. Because <laughs> so, it's T.W.O. Worlds and then like big two Roman numerals behind it. Two Worlds 2. Like really couldn't just come up with a subtitle. Anyways. Yeah, Two Worlds is basically everything I hate about Western RPG boiled into one game. So I wouldn't say this concept looked like anything on paper other than just the fact that it it, it finally showed you what, what the rest of the world sees when they look at Oblivion. And that's I, an ugly, boring, janky game. <laughs> okay, you know what? That's not fair because I kind of enjoyed Oblivion. And... Was it because it was the only game I had on 360 for like a long time? Yeah, maybe. But also, I didn't run into nearly as much jank as everyone else, and I explored the shit out of that world. Although you also hate Skyrim, so I, I I think I hate I think I hate the fact that like Skyrim. Oh, there's all this great thing you can do, all these great things you can do, all these great mods. I'm like, I kind of hate that fact. I hate the fact that someone else had to go it's like how i feel about breath of the wild where it's like the zelda mods and the linkle mods and it's like oh, look at all the great stuff you can do yeah yeah look yes. at all the great things people could do with their free time because the developers couldn't or wouldn't let's get real spicy and say tears of the kingdom better on paper than it was now nah, i mean it's a sequel to breath of the wild with with nuts and bolts mechanics but it's I mean, that is the game is an engineering marvel. I, I think the sky and the on the deep ground are definitely better on paper <laughs> than than they ended up being in game. They are nothing burgers in the game. So. I mean, pe people got to get uh, there's got to be someone out there that feels this way about Breath of the Wild, though. You know, Breath of the Wild being better better promises than it actually delivered. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know that I would agree with it. I'm just saying there's got to be someone that feels that way. Now, although. I you you could say that that's true because of like the music and yeah. the world is more empty than you expect it to be. Yeah, but again, kind of like kind of sequel follow up game. I wouldn't I wouldn't count it. But here's one that we should count because V Sean or Seven Sean or whatever, uh, brute force, and he's damn right about brute force. We I mean we we did brute force. Uh, Twice. Brute force, brute force is the poster child of this sounded cool on paper. <laughs> Four player co op, third person shooter, sci fi. You got alligator men. So Matt McMuscle's dick gets all hard, but it's it's brute force and it's boring and ugly and not fun. I I mean, it's one of that's another game that I played with Rodney. <sighs> God must have spent like a summer day just playing that game. And so while it was not good, I had a great time. I just, uh, you know, I think, you know, uh, I just had a mini stroke. Cause I thought you said brutal legend again. No brute force. <laughs> brute force. The, the crack shooter game. Yeah. Gator man game. Uh, uh, hazardous Wasn't... echoes. He, I, he has two really good ones. I'm okay. oh, sorry. What were you going to say? I, I just I couldn't remember if brute force I, that was co-op too though right yeah uh, see the thing is is co-op games that are bad can still be great <laughs> like spec ops the line we've done we've done co-op in, <laughs> in four player co-op and brute force I had more fun in spec ops than I did in brute force so spec ops that. the line is not a good game though and yet we had a great time you're not talking that. about spec ops the line Andrew you're talking about spec ops like oh, I might one be and two about spec ops, yeah. One and two on GameCube. Why is the line actually good? Am I not? No, because oh yeah, we played we played on GameCube, so maybe you're I didn't. Talk... You're talking about Special Forces, or Spec Ops one or two on GameCube specifically, because Spec yeah. Ops: The Lines is is a cinematic Heart of Darkness game. Oh, uh, okay, no, that's based, not... based on the Heart of Darkness, the book, but in, in a modern Iraq setting. You're right. That is not it. That's not the one that I'm talking about. I the one I'm talking about is you remember there's like a level where it's you're just supposed to be out in the desert hunting for yeah. something, but it's just flat tan. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's how they rendered the desert. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, terrible, terrible game, but we had a great time playing it. And so I have nothing but fond memories of that game. So, uh, yeah, Hazardous Echoes uh, has two really good ones. Haze and Black Sight, Area 51. Uh, Haze needs no introduction because Free Radical, their big follow-up to Time Splitter, is supposed to be a big, giant PS3 exclusive game, and Haze is not good. Not good. But Black Sight, Area 51... Yeah, this does sound good on paper because, you know, everyone everyone who lived through the 90s probably remembers Area 51, the arcade game. Right. You know, yeah, yeah. Cheesy, super cheesy, live action actor, mo-capped, you know, like and shoot aliens. Don't shoot the uh, don't shoot the, the, the soldiers. The aliens looked sort of cool, though. <laughs> anyway, so Midway, before they died, tried to turn it into a, a big old first person shooter franchise. Great idea, actually. Honestly, not not a bad call. I mean, light guns didn't re- don't really work. They didn't they didn't work on HDTVs. It's like, what do you do with Area Fifty One? I'm like, hey, how about we turn it into like a big big cool you know alien it's invasion game? Shooter, yeah, it's a good idea. The game was not good, <laughs> probably because Midway was going out of business at the time. But you know, and now uh, the guy that was the head of them right at the end of the uh, at the end of their life is the uh, is taking over Xbox Game Studios. Yep, yeah, oh Craig, Craig Duncan. Yeah. He was, uh, but he was, he was rare for 14 years. So it's not like he, the last thing he did was midway. Yeah. I think Sam I Roberts, uh, said Omicron, the nomad soul, which I don't know anyone who was ever looking forward to that game. David Kage's first foray into torturing the humanity with, with his storytelling. Um, well, I, I don't know about that game in particular, but I, people had hyped up indigo prophecy to me. Yeah. And on yeah. paper, Indigo Prophecy seemed like it was going to be very cool. I think that's a good one. But it was not. It was not cool. It was not. It was not good or cool. It was awful. Pentagram J two said Red Steel one, uh, which very much so. Remember I how that I was never played Red Steel one. So he said he didn't play until way later, so he missed the hype train of it, but didn't have any expectations either, so I was able to enjoy it. Because Red Steel 1 was supposed to be that it was a launch game for the, for the Wii. It's a first person shooter and you could you and you could also melee with a katana. And it's set in modern day and it's supposed to be sort of like a John Woo flick and it it really wasn't that good and it didn't it it basically invented Ubi bullshots. Ubisoft bullshots were like this game looks way better on screenshot than it did in in when the game you played. However, Red Steel 2, which decided to turn itself into a sci-fi like uh, Western, really actually a very cool game, actually. But, okay. But nobody liked it because everyone was so burned from Red Steel 1. But uh, uh, That'll happen. I just want to throw that aside. Um, <laughs> Joe Tenlo says, Captain Blasto, a space platformer voiced by Phil Hartman. I think this is your alt account on Twitter. <laughs> You know who who said that? <laughs> Joe Joe Tenlo or Joe Italian la- Joe Italian last name. Yeah, blocked. How dare he? <laughs> Guess what? Best, best not game on PS One. That's not going to stop him from seeing what you say, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> best game on PS One. How dare you? <laughs> it is aged like fine wine. Go back and play it, all of you. If you could find it, buy it. Buy special editions of it. Spend as much money as you possibly can. Get it. Play it. Best game. I got to go with uh, Scolio Reset, which he said, The Quiet Man. Um, the idea of playing as a non-hearing person is not terrible. The whole thing, however, bad by design. Disaster beyond belief. By far the worst game I've ever played. Because that was supposed oh, to be like sort of like cinema. Like a, it's like a weird live action beat-em-up game by Square. And it was supposed to be like... in in yeah, the idea was... Could have been sound like playing you playing as a deaf guy, so you can't really you have to do other you you know rely on on other means to you know to to, to fight or whatever. And the game is just terrible, terrible game from all accounts. Like one of the worst ever. Well, it's a silent uh, game. That's got to be brutally. But just boring. you know, it's just how the game controls and plays. It's like wow, like could have been an interesting could have been an interesting idea. You you screwed it up. Red Barrow says the Elder Scrolls series, especially Skyrim, is the main example. Ooh, 
but a game and universe with great lore, but combat is bland and boring. You spend 80% of the playtime walking to nothing to nothing NPCs and walking and being in a conversation with three NPCs that share the same VA is straight up dumb. <laughs> Mike is rolling in his grave right now. He's right. He's right, you know. I don't know. I don't know if he's right. You know, here's the thing. For all the the the, the crap I pile on the bug Thesda, they had ambition. They had scope. They didn't meet them, but they had them. They still do. They, they were trying. They were trying things with Elder Scrolls years and years and years before other companies would attempt to. The problem is they weren't very good. Well, at least the way they came out. Now other companies have caught up to them, and I feel like okay. What Bethesda should have done is is really since they were there the first, they should have been the most refined and improved. But they're not. They're not. And you have games like Witcher 3 come out that are just better than every Elder Scrolls game. And they don't really have a great response. Now, here's the thing. CD Projekt Red all shit their own bed, too, because yeah. they followed up with, with with Cyberpunk, which is also on the list of of or in the replies and several cyberpunk, times several times it's on and cyberpunk is an absolutely worthy example that that game might be again one of the poster childs for this sounded great on paper uh, and then the execution was not so i mean yeah, and again i think the defense people are going to use is like oh it's it's better now but don't but count. what's followed up skyrim you know fallout 4 which has been nothing but divisive uh you have fallout 76 which was crap at the start it, it was luckily able to sort of pull a no man's sky uh and 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 fix itself with Fallout right. 76 but you know it came out like exactly as you think a bug Thesda game would come out uh and then Starfield which to its credit and I've played it too it's not as buggy of a mess as most bug Thesda games are no the problem and with Starfield is that it's just not very in fun to play uh so I don't agree I don't think it has any replay value is the is my problem mm. with it um i enjoyed there's two side campaigns that are more fun than the main campaign by far mm. yeah, i've heard this you are not the first person to tell yeah. me this uh and like those side campaigns are fairly complete like it feels satisfying to get through those campaigns and then you go back to the main campaign and you're like eh. The main campaign's nowhere near as interesting as those side campaigns. And uh, if you're paying attention at all, you you figure out the twist so fast. Like, you you figure it out. I, mm. I think it took me maybe the second time I ran into, or the first time I ran into the... I, I don't want to give away the twist, but one of the ways that it, I... Yeah. It doesn't matter. I will say this. Let's just say I figured out the twist because the very first time I ran in the Starborn, uh, the Starborn, I had a weapon that did particular type of damage that killed them so fast that I knew what they were. <laughs> and then I was immediately like, oh, okay, so they're, they're just advanced humans coming back. And I figured pretty much all of it out right then and there, just by pure accident. Um you know, the rest of the campaign, the main campaign, it's fine, but it's not why you it's not why I played the game. And also exploring most of the planets was boring. Not yes. I mean it well it would have been more interesting if building a base and mining things was more interesting. And building a base was a little bit more of a pain than it was worth. Mm. And then, like, if you get really into building ships and custom ships, cool. But, like, again, you got to get really into the mining and, like, the civ aspect of it. And uh, I liked the game. I just have never had a desire to go back. Yeah. And oddly much. enough, the difference between that and Skyrim is I've played Skyrim a couple of times. Mm. But I also... Skyrim but, feels more encouraging to try different types of builds or go different ways with it. Starfield kind of feels like I know what the big twist is just really nothing, nothing else. The, the other play styles aren't that interesting because it's how many different ways can you shoot a gun? Well, it it's 
when you go through, you know, when you're doing the campaign again, or you go through to the next world where you're more powerful and stuff, and there's things that are changing, but they're all really minor things. And so it's not, you know, it's not as drastic or as interesting as you at first think mm. is the problem with it. Uh, again, the promise of it. Yeah. Okay. I guess Starfield could be on this, even though I liked it is because there was, it was very promising. I don't know if anyone actually says someone might have, but I don't remember Starfield being very big on this list. Like, r- like rounding out big games, you know, CTX Ant-Man and, and, uh, and Broderick three, seven, five, they all said, they both said Brink, which, I know that was a big disappointment for a lot of people, but I don't know enough about the game to make much of a comment on it. Um, just know that it was garbage. Nobody liked it when it came out. Forspoken, last, the last Pop-Tart said Forspoken, which, yeah. Um, Scar 736, or 736 said The Order 1886. Definitely, definitely The Order. Super <sighs> short, not super great. You know, it came from a really high pedigree amount of devs and... It looked really, 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 really good graphically, but it just was so short and so generic. It, you know, like maybe a sequel could have been the thing it needed, but Sony was not not having it after word got out how short and kind of disappointing it was. Well, how so. short is too short? Because I think we advocate for shorter games all the time. Oh man, what was the time? I, oh, you know, that's a good question because it actually has been some some um, uh, some time. Like we're talking about three hours, like uh, three, three hours, five. pretty short, five hours. Uh, if it was really, really about good, five to, about five to seven. Yeah. If it was like really, really good, five hours. All right. But five hours for something that is not super good. Well, they're like, it takes 10, 10 and a half to see everything the game has to offer. And that's the other thing. There's not much extra to do. Right. So it's a movie. It's it's kind of like a movie short third person shooter you're paying 60 bucks for. People were really upset with that. Well, can't blame them. Never played it myself. And it, it didn't have multiplayer either, if I remember right. So it's kind of like imagine buying a more recent Call of Duty with their incredibly short campaigns and there's no multiplayer. You know what? You want to get spicy. Let's say the first Assassin's Creed. Someone did say the first Assassin's Creed. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, where was it? it? Was James uh, that one? Jamo, um, James Heron said, "Assassin's Creed. The game played like dog shit, and the story was mid." Yeah, the first Assassin's Creed game was a big old disappointment for a lot. The of second people. one is fantastic. They're first so one. lucky. They're so lucky that second one exists, man, because that first one was woof. Well, because on paper that that first one was sold so well on paper that a lot of people got it. It, it funded uh, the second one in a way. Yeah. That second one lived up to what it was promised, though. That's yes. I, I mean, uh, the second one was good enough that how many other games limped on before they got really good again? Mm-hmm. Right? A couple people, you know, another one that's very similar, Ubisoft, uh, Rob CBR said Watch Dogs, the first one. Yep, absolutely, 100%. I've never played uh, it myself, but also I, I was never... I don't know if there was like a bias towards... Like I have no reason that I didn't play it. I just never played. Most it. people felt it was a complete disappointment and didn't live up to everything they showed and promised from E3. Uh, Gal Morzu said Lair on PS3 definitely. Factor Five's follow up to Rogue Squadron is this crappy, hard to control dragon game. I had a number of people, uh, Calderon, Ten Chris, and uh, included Jump Force, which I'm like, I think y'all are forgetting how how fast how often and how bad most of these anime brawler arena fighters that come out are sometimes you know every so often you get one that's pretty good and pretty fun but gotcha you gotta remember first. they pump these things out constantly and most of the time they're just not that good but because they put it in an xbox showcase ed3 because it got a lot of push from Microsoft and, and Namco pumping the hell out of it with, with marketing dollars. Everyone thought this was going to be like the ultimate. And, and it came out, I'm like, no, it's an ugly, boring, you know, arena fighter. Just low quality anime arena. And only this time it just looks bad. <laughs> uh, in that vein, uh, but this game is fantastic. And I loved this game and I played it for hundreds of hours. Gotcha Force. 
Uh, I think it's called the Arch Force. I'm that trying. is so niche, though, Andrew. Yeah, it's Gotch Force. Oh, you man. You disappointed with it? No, I loved this game. Oh, yeah. A lot of I people thought... who I played it loved it. Yeah, no, it's, it's a great game. I thought you were going to say Gotcha Force when you first said mm. Jump Force. I That's what I no, thought. Jump you. Force, Fump Jorse. Yeah. But no, I mean, I I don't know. I, I still think... I still think... And the thing is, was like... Uh, God, so good. Just thinking back, as like Mr. Alzi... Mr. Owsley said cyberpunk should have been third person. Um, Agreed. And, I'm, and I agree. I 100% agree. I think when I was like, I feel the same about them saying it's a first person game is how same I feel about Indiana Jones. I'm like, first person, I'm like, Ooh. but at least with Indiana Jones as a first person shooter company making a first person shooter game rather right. than cyberpunk, which was a third person RPG company making a first person shooter RPG. I sort of think I, I I think Indiana Jones is going to live up to the hype. I think it is. I, I think, think it'll be. Game. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna be a lot better than uh, definitely a lot better than Cyberpunk was at launch. But Cyberpunk was just like, you know, the, a, everything after the the concept trailers was just sort of like like a letdown in some way. I'm like, it's Cyberpunk. Oh my god, that's going to be amazing. It's going to be great. It's going to look so good. It's first person. Ooh. It, it, but here's gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every other kind of like first person sort of quasi RPG you've ever played. It's like yeah. <laughs> it doesn't really look like Blade Runner. It looks more like iRobot. It is, uh, mm. you know, we should just do a uh, a response to one of those state of plays or something where we don't say anything. The only thing that we do is ooh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> <Just> give it, <laughs> ugh. but it sounds good. It's just Sing, single grunt reply reactions. Ugh. 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 Oh. <laughs> no one said orc no one said operation raccoon city no someone did oh who I said have, that i i did i did have someone say operation raccoon city because that one was one for me where i was like i was genuinely like oh this is gonna this is, you know fuck hard and it did not <laughs> surject mr mr g doberman hell yeah uh, and i'm sorry mg doberman MG Doberman said Operation, Operation Raccoon City. And now here's the thing. Everyone, you and everyone were so hyped. Like, and the only one who was on my side was Ben, who played Strider. Because Ben worked at Sony at the time, and Ben knew who the devs were with Slant 6. And he's like, oh, this game is going to be terrible. Oh. And, and I was like, thank you, Ben. <laughs> and it was. Because uh, I... Uh, and, did, I uh, yeah. did I know Ben I, yet? Because I would have trusted Ben. Ben so trust. Ben's one of the most trustworthy people we've ever known. Right. <laughs> like genuinely, if Ben, like, I, I remember because like everyone's like, this game's gonna be crazy, it's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be all cool stuff. And I'm like, it's I'm like, guys, it's not made by Capcom proper, it's made by Slant Six. And Ben was like, wait, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, it's been, I was like, oh man, that game's gonna not gonna be good. And he's like, and, and and he was the only one on my side about him. People were like, oh no, no, go you could turn it around. And he's like, bro, every time I've had to like because he worked at, you know, he worked Sony QA and he said every time he had to deal with that team, it's just kind of like every time they'd send a build in, the game was just utter trash. He's like, oh man, these guys are not good <laughs> and they don't make good stuff. And and we have to constantly like send stuff back to them. And so, because they did, they did some of the really disappointing SOCOMs. And uh, yeah, when it, Raccoon City, it's funny because Raccoon City did sell very well when it first came out, but like the reception yeah. was not great. It was a great idea. That's a great yeah. idea. Be one of the mercenaries that goes into Raccoon City. Like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I guess if you don't see what the game looks like, it might be a great idea. But then you see the game and it's just kind of like this weird well, fevered, fever dream of weird neon, I don't know, like like psycho mantis. We, we, we had to out stupid the designs in the movies, stupid. You know, with the <laughs> our get up and gears and yeah well stuff, i don't so. i don't think ben ben must not a uh, i must not have known ben at the time he was and he wasn't even really going off of anything with the design or the look or he, he just <laughs> he just was he just heard me arguing i don't think this game's gonna be no this game's gonna be great and i'm like slant six and he heard that he's like oh no it ain't gonna be good <laughs> i mean that's uh do you, i don't want to end on that kind of a bummer <laughs> It's a bummer episode, man. There's no. It is a it is a bummer episode, but we got to end on a high note. There's got to be a high note. What is what's one that was <laughs> on paper looked terrible, but it it surprises. Let's throw everyone for a flip. Near Automata. Touche. Actually, every yeah, game Tom great. had made before Automata was a pile of dung. No, and you had to convince me to play it. 
I had to convince myself to play it. You, I, I don't remember if you remember. I think we were streaming together something. Maybe it was one of the Resident Evil. Actually, it might have been Resident Evil 7. No, I can't remember which one. It, but me and you were streaming something together. And uh, you ma- you basically made me promise to play it. And then I did. And I actually, I really liked it. But yeah, that was one that I expected to suck nuts. So I guess that's, there you go. That's our positive spin to end the episode. <laughs> We've got producers to thank. If uh, if there's a game that we left out, if you if there's a game that you particularly remember, you're like, oh, this is this is a game that I was super hyped for. That on paper it should be great, you know, like Monster Hunter, uh, but it sucks. Kidding, I, I'm not so like sorry. Monster Hunter. I know, I'm sorry. I just uh, I don't like them, but I'm gonna. I don't want to end it on a spicy note. But anyway, tell us on Twitter. Tell us on uh, on. The YouTube comments. Our producers for this episode are Dragon Wolf Makoto, Os Knight, Zyber Knight, Skrunami, Croy35, Hyper Viper89, Hockey Kong64, LCL Mayhem, and Ziggy Z. Thank you, dudes. We will catch you next time. Later, dudes.